know, we sang about what God has done, the great things that God has done in our own lives. This is a special day to recognize the great things that God has done in the lives of Kidani and his family. So let's just welcome the family. They're, they're going to uh, share with us today, um, and we're just going to be amazed at what God is doing. So, As Pastor Douglas said, you know everything. You were with us, all of you were uh, traveling with us in all our steps, uh, in our time of joy, in our time of uh, weeping and praying, all of you were with us, so we thank you. And today uh, we will sing a song of praise first in our language, and then they will say something. In fact, still they have uh, uh, some shortage to express themselves, but they will try to say something. And uh, then I will present. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Hello? Okay. And then, and then I will present a little bit of work. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, our prayer was answered just last year when we were praying here. Uh, because the Bible says, you know, when we pray, we have to believe that it's already answered. And, but it was uh, evident. I mean, uh, we seen in our eyes just on the end of December by uniting all this family. Uh, Today, after six months, we are standing in front of you, all of us, wearing special dress, uh, traditional dress, and we are just here to be as a tool and express his miraculous deed among us. His miracle hand has revealed among us, we know it, so we have to talk just by being together and presenting in front of you and the Holy Spirit is still around with us. Uh, so we will uh, sing a song in our language. If you can, try to follow us. If not, listen to us and uh, we'll start singing a song. <laughs> Kazantu, 
كدلتو نتكا فغريس لزي قبلنا خلو مسكانا تاينا منبر بلو مسكانا بعز فندر بن مسكانا يكبان يسوس قيتانا لزي قبلنا خلو مسكانا تاينا منبر بلو مسكانا بعز فندر بن مسكانا يكبان يسوس قيتانا سلازي كبر لنا خلو مسكانا انت اينا مونا غربلو مسكانا بعيد فندر بن مسكانا يقباني يسوس كويتانا امين Okay. Uh, can you say something? It's about Thank just you. praising God. The, the song is just, you did a lot for us. And we give you praise. And we say a little. A little means in our language is the uh, expression of praising God. You say continuously. Okay. Say something. <laughs> she can express herself she will she will not even stop it you know but the problem is the limit of language anyway at least she says something yeah yeah corp tazara bint ay tul yalla qodr walki azza azza yeah Praise God. First, I want to thank God. Because God is good. God has done a lot of things for us. We cannot express the whole thing. Generally, praise God. <laughs> for His forgiveness. For His salvation. For His love. For His kindness. For His Almighty. For His pastor or shepherding us. Because of his shepherdness, we pass through everything, but he was with us. In general, we don't have a word to express what he has done for us, but we praised him. Something. <laughs> okay. Um, how are you? How are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm Thank good. You. Thank you. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> at, at, at least you, you saw him physically and his one word even. So that's enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for your prayers for us and uh, God did uh, good things for us. 
and uh, he helped us to go by many things. And thank you for your prayer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, new wine. Um, first, I want to praise the Lord Jesus for all things have done for us. Uh, in fact, I don't have any words to explain my um, everything what God has done for us. Uh, but um, I wish I could tell you everything what God has done in our family, in our life, everything of our uh, what we pass. But um, I will give praise to God because he was helping us in everything, in what we do, in what we pass. Um, it wasn't easy, but uh, God's grace was helping us in everything. Um, and also, uh, God pushes us to give him praise and also uh, to be faithful in his, um, in his everything, what ha he has done for us. And also, um, actually, I can say something. Um, as everybody knows the word of God in theoretically or as a word, but we have seen the word of God in our life practically. So there's a difference for us, uh, what God has done for us. There's a unique thing for us because we know the word of God practically and we have seen a lot. Uh, for example, uh, in Psalm 23, uh, I mean in Psalms 23, uh, the word of God says, God is my shepherd. We have seen him shepherd uh, when he was shepherd. Yeah, yeah, okay, leading us. Okay. He was leading us. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for my English. Uh, we have seen a lot. Uh, it's not only our shepherd by word, but we have seen when he was leading us, when he was feeding us by his hands, uh, when he was doing a lot of miracles in our small age. So I want to give thanks to God. Uh, it's not a simple thing to be here with you all guys. It's a miracle. Uh, before, <laughs> we hadn't been even thought about that. This is going to be happen. Uh, but God is good and he did everything good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, in fact, <laughs> I can't say a lot, but uh, God is good. God has done a lot of things in our life. And we, we thank you a lot because uh, you are praying for us and you are helping us, especially with our dad. He was, when he was alone, uh, he wasn't alone because you were with him. You were helping him and you were giving him um, any things. So thank you. God bless you, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, have a seat. Go. Okay, praise God. Yeah. Uh, being this family together and standing at this stage and talk to you is by itself is a great miracle. Uh, because as Pastor Douglas said, one year and a half, after, um, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, last year, it was a dream. But all of a sudden, the Lord did something and the dream become true and visible to us. And we touch it and we test it and we grab it. So this is not our power, it's not our mighty, but the Almighty God did things happen. The impossible things become possible because he is among us and he was with us. In the gospel, we see Christ did a lot of miracles, including raising the dead body. He was dead for four days, Lazarus, but Jesus Christ came and woke him up in John chapter 11. And also the Lord Jesus Christ did a miracle during the 
uh, wedding time, he turned the water to wine. That's a miracle. In fact, uh, do you ever think that, you know? You have a plant, the plant grow up, and then finally, it has a fruit, the fruit become wine. This is a miracle by itself, you know? You sow a seed or something, plant a tree, and the tree become wine automatically. This by itself is a miracle. In fact, we are his creation, his hand as a miracle. We all here, all human beings, all the universe. When you see, you can see the hand of God. And you have to praise him, what he has done for everything, you know. Sometimes if these uh, 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 scientists or any technicians, when they do something new, special cars like Tesla or anything, we, we praise them, we, we, we just see it as something happened, a miracle. But more than that, the Lord did everything, all the creations by his word, and it happened all of a sudden. This is a miracle by itself. So we live every day by his hand, by his leading, by his almighty power. That itself is a great miracle. So always we have to praise him. We don't have time to complain or do other things, but we have to praise him in all steps. In fact, this family, you see them, they pass through very hardship, even in their young age. You see my son, now he's grown up, now he's 5.8 feet. Uh, but when he was coming from home, he was a small one. And she, uh, we were doubting how can he travel three days on foot and during the bush and night, passing through all the rocks, you know, valleys, mountains, and uh, he has to protect himself from uh, wild animals and mines, soldiers. You know, there are a lot of things, but they pass through the shadow of death. But the Lord was with him as a shepherd, and they able to pass it. In fact, maybe I will talk a little bit about that. And they were trusty. No clothes, no food, enough food. And three days they have to sleep during the day in the cave where animals living there. And during the night they have to walk. And it was very tough and dangerous, but the Lord was with them. And they passed. And when you see them now, just you think that they will come, somebody will think that they came just flying here, you know? But it was not like that. They pass through all kind of hardships, including thirsty, you know, starving, and even sickness. They told me when they arrived in the refugee camp, my son was sick of malaria. And automatically when he was sleeping, he started to talk just like, you know, crazy person. Yes, they are the people, they are talking. His mind was just almost gone. And she was, and Saron, his sister, was confused. What happened to you? Please calm. You are sleeping, please. And he was talking, no, they are playing, they are coming. You see them? Just like, you know, crazy person. And then finally they took him to uh, somebody, a doctor, and they give him uh, the tablets, and then he become okay. But, you know, malaria is very dangerous, you know? Uh, one of the incidents they passed through. And in, including uh, when they, they come, they told me the first day or the second night, uh, uh, all of a sudden they, when they pass, you know, they found uh, a tigers, a group of tigers. You know, they didn't know, but when they just automatically, I don't know, all of a sudden they, they came to their ways. They were in the... Uh, there was some kind of lake and they were playing, the tigers. And they hear their noise and finally the guide told them, these are tigers, please keep quiet, silent. And then finally they retreated 
And then when they get some place of hiding, the guide throw a stone on the water and the tigers were just uh, running and they go to their bushes, you know, something as if something happened. And then finally, they uh, slowly walk away and pass. But at that night, they could be dead on the hand of tigers, but the Lord keeps them. And there are also a lot of things happen in their life, but the Lord, the shepherd, was with them. They see all of these miracles in order to test, touch, and uh, understand his guidance. So we have to praise every God. No complaint. There is no way to complain, but every time we praise God. Uh, it is glad to be with you here, guys. Just let go to my sermon, a little bit worse of God. And by the way, just last month, May was a special month for me, for my family, and for uh, our story. Uh, just 27 years ago, we get married with my wife in May 10. 27 years we stay together. In fact, there are a lot of years we were separated because of, uh, you know, different kind of obstacles, such like six years we didn't, never seen each other for the past six years. And in the middle also, there were a conflict with Ethiopia and Eritrea. I was in Ethiopia and they were in Eritrea and the others, you know. But in all these 27 years, we were keeping our uh, covenant promise, and the Lord was with us, and uh, we keep intact, and we see the hands of the Lord. And also, May was a special uh, month because just May 10 was the birthday of uh, Sharon, our daughter. She became 23 on May 10th. And last May, I was in Addis Ababa for three weeks to spend with, uh, time with my oldest daughter because of age, she is still in Ethiopia. And I have to go and see her and to spend time with her because after six and a half years of separation, I was with her. We had a good time and the Lord was with us. So uh, last month was very special month for me and for my family. And in general, Ebenezer, the Lord was with us. He helped us in all of our steps. Uh, at this time, in fact, as she has said, uh, I want to thank God, uh, the Lord of heaven and earth, who loved us and lead us comfort us, provide us, protect us until this very day. Not only for me and for my, for my family, but for all of us, he was a provider. He showed us his love in practical way. And he was guiding us. So we have to praise his name all the time, every day. And secondly, I want really, it's, I'm saying this from my depths of heart, you know, bottom of my heart. Really, I want to thank the New Vine Church, the family, the community. I see the practical church of, in the book of Acts, sharing everything together, taking others' burden and helping others in materially, spiritually, everything. So I have tested, so I want to thank the leaders, especially the leaders, pastors, and also all of you. And really, I thank Sergio, he's not here, but who, the person who lead me and bring me here, you know? The Holy Spirit uh, was there, and Sergio is the one of the tool to bring me here. And really, I met you the day I come here is a great day for me. So uh, I want to thank God. 
I want to thank you. I want to thank the pastors and all of you. Praise God. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> the Bible says that there is a time for everything. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from 1 to 8, it reveals everything there. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. Yes, it's practically. Everybody knows it. But sometimes we forget it. A time of born. We were born. A time of to die. Everybody will die. But the difference is those who are in Christ, we will go to our father. And that's a bridge. To die for us is a bridge, you know, as if you traveled from uh, San Francisco to uh, uh, Oakland, you need a bridge. You know, this is just a bridge for us. Transferring from this place to other place, you know, to the eternity. And a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. You remember? Last year, we were weeping here. I was standing here. Everybody was praying for me. And the Holy Spirit was sending a word through all brothers and sisters. I wish we will see the video. I think it will be here, the videos. But the weeping time. You remember? February last year, I was standing here and talking to you. This man was my greatest money. Just like Christ was weeping and praying in his passion time. Get some money. February was like that for me, last February. But this February was different. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stone and a time to gather stones. A time to impress and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent, a time to speak out. A time to laugh, a time to hate. We, but we don't hate, we hate only sin. A time for war, a time for peace. Even in our country, for 20 years, it was a conflict, tension, but when the time came, all of a sudden, things become peace. And then that itself is a miracle for my younger son and my wife and Rhoda to come here. We were talking and discussing with people, with the pastors here, and we were saying, yeah, in maybe in a, a June, last June, they, may, they will pass a new, uh, a new legislation or a new kind of uh, uh, reformation or some kind of law. At least the, 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 the time limit, the age limited will be grown to 10 or 12 years. And then they will allow my son to get out of the country. That was my imagination, you know? <laughs> I was talking this. But all of a sudden, things change it and they pass without any passport, any uh, permission, just they were passing from country to country and praising God in the van. They were singing, praising God without any problem. They passed and they crossed the border. That's a miracle, a time of peace. Now, now is a time of praise. In fact, every day we have to praise God. We don't have any, any reason to complain. Even though we are passing through any kind of hardship, please don't complain. Give praise God. That's my word. Every time we have to pray, praise God. In fact, we have to pray when we get some kind of difficulties. We have to pray it and 
After praying, we already give our burden and we have to raise in praise. Because the Lord, the Almighty God, can do it everything. He can turn upside down. So now, especially this day, is a time of praise, witness of his deeds, love, joy, counting his miracles in our uh, life, along with the community of New Vine Church. Uh, <clears throat> in Psalm 111, verse 4, it says, He does amazing things that will be remembered. That will be remembered. The Lord is merciful and compassionate. He does amazing things among Israelites. He does amazing things in David's life, David's life, the King David in Saul, so that we be remembered. And also, he has done countless things for us. In Psalm 139, it says in verse 17 and 18, I am very fast, I don't know. Anyway, I think you will catch up. And how difficult it is for me to fathom your thoughts about me. Oh God, how vast is there some total? If I try to count them, they would outnumber the gains of sand. I would still have to contend with you. A lot, a lot, a lot of things that God has done for all of us. So it is countless, multitude, surplus. We have to praise for all these things, even for this day. He has led us to come here, to stand here and to talk, you know. There are people who cannot talk you know, at this time, but at least we are talking. We are listening. We, are, we see everything. So we have to praise for that too. But there are times, you know, when you got up and trying to praise the Lord, and there are obstacles who want to stop you not to give any praise, like our enemy devil. In the Bible, Luke chapter 19, Verse 7 to 40, uh, it is the history of triumphant entry of Jesus Christ and the reaction of the Pharisees. I am sure you remember it. Before the Passover, Jesus has to pass, riding the colt or the donkey, and something happened there. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyful to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Everybody was joyful, praising Christ. Already they have seen his miracle, his deed. And then, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, as it has been written. Peace in heaven and glory in the heights. They were praised, just Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to them something. Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Stop them, they said. It's a shame to say that, you know. The people is shouting because they know the King, the Lord Christ, he has a big things and they have to praise him. But these people, the jealous people, I can say maybe, and those who were uh, working under the devil, I can say they are enemies of Christ because, and they said they want to stop these people from shouting, from praising, from uh, uh, raising his name. And Jesus says something. I tell you, I tell you, he answered. I tell you, if these were silent, if these people were silent, the very stone would cry out. Look, the stones. 
if we try to stop these people, I'm sure I'm saying that the stones, the mountains, all the creatures will shout and cry and give praise, God. Yes, all the creatures give thanks to God. If all the creatures give thanks, who are we to deny, to stop? Who are these Pharisees to stop these people not giving praise? So we have to speak. We have to talk what he has done for us. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be tell the story he has done in our life. The above verse holds fundamental truths about reaction of the crowd and the response of the enemy, the Pharisees, and Jesus Christ, the response of both. Christ is the Lord of all miracles and need to be praised in all circumstances. In all circumstances, he deserves to be praised. All of a sudden, when Christ comes down, being riding on the colt, the crowd reflects their appreciation. Who is completely joyful circumstance and praise the Christ. But in the opposite side, the Pharisees who represent the enemy and tempting that he is the creator of attempting to silence the crowd by requesting Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? They cannot stop these people, but they ask, they request Christ to stop these people. My goodness. How come? Are they expecting him to stop these people? His weakness. The answer of Jesus Christ for their request was amazing. Which shows that he is the creator of all living and non-living things. Everything, including you, those who oppose me, are created by, my, by me. And he said you should give praise God. But you still oppose. Can you imagine that the stones cry out and the teachers of the crowd named the Pharisees try to silence them? Yes, the Lord knows their language. Christ knows their language, even the stones' language. Actually, all his creation has obligation to express Praise in appropriate manner to their creator. Including the birds. In the morning, they praise God. All the creatures, if you study, they have their own language to praise their God at least. Therefore, inevitably, we have to recognize whatever the Lord has done to us. In general, as a whole, and individually. As a community, as a family, as a new vine church community, we have to praise God for what he has done every day, every minute, every second. Sadly, there are not enough people willing to recognize the role of God in their lives. Even including those who called in his name. There are people. They don't want to recognize sometimes. As if they have done by their own ability. There are many people who think the source of their success is own strength or power or education or family or others. That's a mess thing. We have to rely on the Almighty God. But the truth is, no one prevails by his own power. As the Bible says, 1 Samuel 
chapter 2, verse 9. For not my mighty shall a man prevail. Not by your mighty, not by your power, not by your knowledge, not by your education, not by your uh, money, by treasures, is by my power. The Lord who gives life, he raised the dead in victory. He has to deserve the praise, everything for him. Even in the Old Testament, you remember the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, the Lord said to the Son of Man, and he said to me, Son of Man, can these bones live? Already they are dead. All these bones, just like laying on the ground, dead bones, nobody, no flesh, no spirit, no nothing. But answered, I answered. He doesn't say nothing, but he answered, Oh Lord, God, you know, I don't know, you know. <laughs> One thing which I always criticize in this country is whatever they say, I know. The people say, I know. But they, they do just as if they don't know. But they say, I know. When you talk to them, I know. They are doing again is the law, again is something, but they still, when you ask them, they say, I know. But here, <laughs> Ezekiel said, Oh Lord, God, you know. I don't know nothing, but you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones. Who is going to talk? The son of man, Ezekiel the prophet. To prophesy over these bones, the dead bones, and say to them, Oh bones, can they listen? But the Lord said to him to say, They are dead. Oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden they heard. And they become together and get flesh and spirit, become a big army. It's a miracle. So we have to speak out, proclaim what the Lord has done in our life. Even First John chapter 1, verse 1 and 3 says, This is what we proclaim to you. What, we was, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at, and our hands have touched what we have seen and heard. We announce to you too, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. John says that. We heard, we touch. Always we are listening, hearing, Touching, testing his miracle. So that we will give praise the Lord for what he has done. To give a credit. It's simple for him. But we see for us it's very impossible. But the Lord did it possible. So the Lord has done a big thing among us. We are a member of this church, and we were praying, and we were dreaming to be for this family to be united at least, you know. And the Lord did it. He did it. He should take the credit. And we are also should praise God because we sin, we touch, we test his power. And the Lord did something special in the midst of us. That means he is among us. He is with us. And it also gives us a lesson even for the future in our life, in the midst of us. The Lord is with us. Wherever you work, walk, he is with us. And he will do the same miracle even more 
different special things he will do among us until we go to the heaven. Praise his name. Thank you very much. Shall we pray? And Pastor Ted will come and pray for us. For those of you who did not walk with Kidani's family, we probably don't understand the full extent of the kind of miracle that we're talking about. Uh, but those of us who walk with him, we knew that this was an impossibility. Uh, do you remember? I was actually, it was this Christmas, I was in New York and I got a text. Uh, when we first collected the offering and we decided to smuggle the children out of the country, uh, I think the person who was supposed to take the money, he ran away with that money, right? So we lost all of our collections. And I remember what Kidani said at that moment. I was actually very upset and angry. And per Kidani, you said, perhaps the Lord has another way. Uh, that's faith. And then the Lord really had another way. And that's what we heard tonight. Uh, God literally opened the border between Eritrea and Ethiopia uh, that was literally at war against each other for over 25 years. And uh, when that border opened, we knew that that was the Lord. Now, the bigger question was that God, was God doing it just for Kidani or did he have any other purpose? <laughs> Now, I didn't have the faith to believe that it was just for Kidani. Uh, but I think our brother really believed that the Lord was doing this really so that his kids can get out. And then uh, it was in Christmas right after he arrived, I got a text from Douglas that the border closed. And to this day, the border remains closed. Uh, so... What I want to share with you is that the God that we believe in, I mean, can he do something as outrageous as something like this just for one person or one family? And as I'm sitting here, I feel like this is a challenge that the Lord wants uh, us to really take on. How many miracles do we miss out on because we never think that God would do such a thing? Uh, when things really become hard, we begin to face impossible situations. We can believe for God to do things for other people, but many of us, we just shy away or shrink away because he's never going to do that for me. Uh, he's probably going to have other reasons or other things to take care of. So tonight, this is how we want us to pray. Uh, some of us here, we were really facing some impossible situations in life, right? whether that is your work, your job, some health issues. Uh, some of us, we have no idea where God is taking us in this next season. Uh, maybe some of you, this is a season for laughter. This is a season for dancing. But I'm talking about some of us who are going through a really difficult season in life. I want you to just stand up. And we were going to continue to exercise this mountain-moving faith. So... Uh, whoever you are, uh, wherever you're sitting right now, you feel like you're just going through some real impossible situation or you're facing some mountains in your life. I want you to just stand. Then we're going to gather around and, and just pray for you. So stand up, whether it's health, visa issues, family issues, career, your job. Will you just stand from where you are? And I want all of us, uh, those that are sitting, just will you surround these brothers and sisters? And if God did something like this for Kidani and his family, why not for the rest of us, right? Right? Did he do it just because he's special? <laughs> and you're not special? <laughs> We're all special in his sight. And uh, I think the Lord really wants us to exercise and continue to walk in this kind of faith. Uh, it's an absolute confidence and trust that we put in him. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to just surround these people that are standing. Go and lay your hands. Uh, uh, those that are standing, if you can just briefly say, I want God to do, do this. This is the mountain that I'm facing, and I believe that God can move the mountain. So just share, and then let's speak over these mountains that are standing in the way, and let's see what God does. 
we don't need to explain, but be brief. Uh, whatever mountain it is, just call it out. And then the rest of us, we're going to speak to these mountains. Lord, we believe that you're raising the level of our faith tonight. Lord, remember, you told us that even if we have a, a, a faith as small as a mustard seed, we can actually speak to the mountains to be moved and to be removed. And Lord, we know that this is not just a wishful thinking or this is not just a suggestion, Lord, but you want us to live like this. You want us to really walk and, and live in this audacious faith that, that you desire to uh, accomplish in our lives through our faith, Lord. Uh, so, Lord, uh, will you hear all our cries and even the words of faith that have been spoken over our brothers and sisters, Lord, let it be done because we're asking these things not just for our own sake, but for your own glory. And that, Father, we pray that in this family, in this community, that we will never run out of stories of your praise to tell uh, the world, Lord. In the coming days, Lord, we pray for even greater breakthroughs and miracles to continue to take place in the lives of our people, Lord. So, Lord, we receive this gift of faith today from you. And, Lord, help us to really believe that you are not only able, but you're willing to do these things for us. And that we walk and live as your children with the full authority that comes directly from you, Lord. So we thank you once again for encouraging our hearts today. And we celebrate what you're doing. Uh, we celebrate what you have done. But we also celebrate what you will be doing in our future in the coming days. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen.